Good evening, folks. Boda Bob here. How are you doing today? Well, I want to thank everybody who uh, stopped by and looked at my last video. Really blew up. Thank you, Paul Shore. Thank you, Kathy, for uh, um, taking the time and, uh, and telling your community about my channel. I really appreciate it. It's been a great help. What I have here is a former bowling alley. And from what I'm told, bowling alleys back in the day were made from hard rock maple. That's what I was told this was when I bought it, that it's hard rock maple. So let me get a piece of it. So this is the hard rock maple. This is the end off of one of the ends. I cut it down to about six foot in length. And then I put a band of red oak around the outside. And the bowling alley, I guess the reason they were replacing it was because, you know, it was starting to split. It must have been showing its age. And so I took some epoxy, two part, well, it was actually putty epoxy. And I filled in some of the bigger cracks. The table is now 73 inches long and 22 and a half inches wide, counting the band. So I think this inside was about 21 inches wide. But one of the things about these bowling alleys, the way they made them, is they um, milled a groove in the side and then the opposite side had a raised... Um, a raised rail like that fit into the groove. I don't know what joint that's called. Maybe it's a bowling alley joint for all I know. But um, every board was nailed to the next board. So as they built, and they're not glued together. That's the thing that I was surprised by. They are not glued together. They are allowed to expand and contract as the moisture, um, the humidity, I guess, in the air uh, increases and decreases at the bowling alley. So I was really surprised by that. But one of the problems I had is cutting this thing um, was hitting nails. I hit a lot of metal. Um, I'm sure I boogered one or two blades up. And how I cut it, uh, was I would put like a half inch down and cut across then lower the blade again a half inch and cut and I was using my circular saw and the circular saw was a very thin kerf circular saw so the saw blade wanted to flex as I was cutting so I didn't get the ends as straight as I would prefer um, so that was um, an unfortunate thing for me. I really didn't like that. But um, what are you going to do? You got to go with what you got, you know. And so what I did after I cut it is I took my uh, angle grinder and put a flat disc on there. And I tried to sand the end grain as uh, flat as I could. And I just went with it. You know, it. this is a very, very hard wood. It's old, and I believe as wood gets older and dries, it becomes harder, especially hardwood, harder to work with. Um, so anyhow, it is what it is. I got this epoxy on the top, and uh, I've been sanding it for a week or two, and I'm getting ready to put a finish coat on it. I just wiped it down with uh, I just wiped it down with some uh, paint thinner, aka mineral spirits, to uh, pick up the dust. I'll probably wipe it down once again. It's not a problem with the mineral spirits because my uh, finish is going to be 50% uh, tongue oil and 50% mineral spirits or paint thinner. So it's a 50-50 of that, one-to-one -one ratio. And I'm going to put that on. But I think before I put it on, I'm going to uh, 
wipe it down one last time. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a, a lint-free cloth and uh, pour it onto the uh, surface and then rub it in. It's going to be a hand rubbed uh, finish. Once the uh, once I put the finish on, I will let it dry overnight, and then the next day I'll come up out. I'll hit it with some steel wool. Some uh, uh, I got some steel wool around here somewhere, and uh, I will uh, rub it down with steel wool, wipe it down again with mineral spirits, and then put another coat on. And I'll probably put three or four coats on of the tongue oil, and uh, it'll look really good when I'm done. So I just put the, the tongue oil and the uh, mineral spirit right on the cloth and then wipe it in. In my opinion, it's a, a good way of doing it. So this is my, uh, this is going to be my miter station doing stuff man I tell you that really looks good right now epoxy putty stick this is a uh, part number item number nine three nine five seven I'll put that down in the pop-up there so basically what you do I take a putty knife and I cut about a half inch quarter of an inch off depending on how much I want to use you're better if you just use like a quarter of an inch because it will set up rather quick so then you just knead it together the inside is one part the outside wrapper is another part slice a piece off knead it together really good so it's a consistent color and then I just used my putty knife and pushed it down into this crack it left it they say it sets up in five minutes let's see Product cures in 24 hours. Um, store sealed in a cool, dry location, 55 to 75 degrees. Uh, work time is 5 to 8 minutes, and its set time is 18 minutes. So I'd let it dry overnight, then come back the next day and hit it with my 80 grit sandpaper in the uh, random orbit sander. And that's that. I put a 45 degree chamfer the whole way around the top using my uh, router. That came out really nice. It softens the uh, edge a little bit. And uh, attached the, uh, I attached the red oak uh, banding. I call it a band. I don't know what you call it. But um, the edge board, I attached it using uh, um, hardwood, fine tooth, Craig screws. I forget what the length of them was, about an inch and a quarter, I reckon. Yeah, it, this is really looking good. I am, I am just really tickled. Like I said, I'm gonna let it dry overnight. And uh, yeah, it's beautiful. Hand rubbed oil finish. The nice thing about doing the hand rubbed finish I'm not worried about putting something on there. You're not going to screw it up like you would. If that was poly, I couldn't put nothing on there. I couldn't let that rag lay on there. Uh, I want to thank you all for coming and by. Now would be a great time to like, share, and subscribe. 
Till the next time here at Boda Bob's, have a great day. Cheers.